Earth observation is often deemed as a saturated market, a sector of the space industry with no real winners, and an uninvestable business model. In today's video, let's pit Black Sky against Planet Labs to determine which of the two, if either, is the better investment opportunity. So first things first, Planet and Black Sky have mismatched reporting periods. So if you look on paper, Black Sky's Q4 2024 is the most recently available quarter, whereas Planet Labs would be Q4 of 2025, despite us not technically being there within the calendar year. So these reporting periods, they're actually only one month apart. The most recent quarter we have for Black Sky ends December 31st of 2024, while Planet's most recent quarter ends one month later on January 31st of 2025. So to make things less complicated, we're going to simply refer to both reports in this video as Q4 of 2024. This is in an effort to align with the current calendar year rather than the mismatched uh, fiscal years. So I know this is technically incorrect, but it's technically more accurate. So we're going to we're going to keep it. So starting with revenue, Planet's Q4 details quarter over quarter growth of 0.5%, 4.6% year over year and 10.7% for the full year compared to the prior full year. Black Sky, on the other hand, came in with 34.7%, negative 14.5%, and 8.0% respectively. For forward guidance, Planet is targeting 10.5% growth over the next year, with Black Sky targeting 30.7%. So weighing in favor of forward-looking revenue growth sets up Black Sky to put the first point on the board. So now when we're comparing companies like this, if the company has a higher revenue, we can assume that the trickle down is going to be higher in tandem. So think gross profit, operating profit, etc. So rather than looking at profit as a dollar amount, it's going to be more qualitative to approach this comparison in terms of a percentage of revenue, aka the margins, rather than a dollar amount for each. So to put this simply, for the remainder of the income statement section, we're going to compare margins rather than income. In Q4, Black Sky saw a 77.4% gross margin compared to 66.2% in the prior year, with Planet reporting 62.1% and 55.2% respectively. Looking forward, we can expect Black Sky's margins to remain around 60 to 70%, with Planet's margins expected to see a slight decline. For gross margin, Black Sky has been consistently slightly above planet with forward guidance to keep this pace intact. As a result, our second point also goes to Black Sky. Two points Black Sky, zero points planet. Operating margins have both been improving over time, but with no clear leader and both companies coming up negative, no points will be awarded for this round. For adjusted EBITDA, we can see that Black Sky is on their fifth consecutive quarter of profitability, with Planet Labs reaching profitability for the first time in Q4, only to guide for more red over the coming year. As a result, three points Black Sky, zero points Planet. Moving to the balance sheet, let's start with liquidity. So that we're on the same page, we're defining liquidity as cash and equivalents, restricted cash, and short-term investments combined. Planet has not only more liquidity, but a longer runway as well. Ideally, both of these companies are profitable before the terminal quarters that you see on the screen, but in a worst case scenario, Planet appears to be better equipped to weather the storm. With the first point on the board, three points Black Sky, one point Planet. Equity, also known as book value, tells a similar story. Although Planet's equity is three times the size of Black Skies, both are deteriorating at a similar pace. Despite being inclined to call this one a tie, Planet has an impressive zero dollars of debt to their name. And because of this, another point goes to Planet. Planet only started to report the backlog in Q4 of 2023. So we have this year over year comparison with a data break on either side. Over the past couple quarters, both companies took on an admirable amount of backlog, but ultimately, Planet appears to be in slightly better shape, tying the match three for three. So now for stock-based compensation, Black Sky is often regarded as having exorbitant levels. 
Black Sky went public in September of 2021, with Planet following three months later in December of 2021. These dates hardly need to be outlined when we can simply look at this chart. You can clearly identify when each of these companies went public based on stock-based compensation alone. The difference here, though, is that while both companies peaked at a similar point, Black Sky brought their stock-based compensation down to a more reasonable level, whereas Planet did not. To look at stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue, Planet Labs has remained around 20%, whereas Black Sky has been hovering closer to 10%. So despite Black Sky having the reputation for high stock-based compensation, it's actually relatively reasonable, especially in comparison to Planet Labs. So pulling back into the lead is Black Sky with another point. Capital expenditures has managed to be more or less in line over time with Black Sky reporting 9.5 million in Q4 and 50.2 million in full year, with Planet reporting 12.8 and 49.6 in the same periods. Shifting CapEx to be viewed as a percentage of revenue allows us to see that despite being at similar levels, Planet has a lesser CapEx burn compared to Black Sky, marking another point for Planet, tying the match for four. So last but not least, let's talk about the valuation. Ideally, when determining the fair value of a company, the company is profitable in terms of both net income and free cash flow. Now, aside for obvious reasons why these are important to a business, the profitability also allows for income-related formulas to weigh in on the fair value of the company. So for example, you can't determine a company's price to earnings if the company doesn't produce earnings. The same thing for cash flow-related pricing. So going with what's available, we have the market cap, we have revenue, and we have equity value. With these, we can find the price to sales and the price to book. Now, additionally, debt to equity is another formula that we might use, but as you remember from the, um, the equity section for Planet Labs, they don't have debt. So it's, you can't really do a, an apples to apples comparison. So starting with the current price to sales, we can see that Black Sky is trading around a two, with Planet twice as expensive, trading closer to a 4. Looking ahead, the forward price to sales moves in parallel, with Black Sky now just shy of 2, and Planet just shy of 4. The price to book also outlines Planet as having a slight premium when compared to Black Sky, though not quite as drastic as the price to sales. So for valuation, we've got to give it to Black Sky to put not only the fifth point on the board, but to win the match altogether. So of course, none of this is financial advice. I always encourage you to do your own research. But to get a running head start, be sure to check out the Patreon to view and download the valuation models that are referenced to make these videos that include price targets, key performance indicators, and a whole lot more. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll be familiar with the Planet Labs model, which has now been expanded to include Black Sky, allowing us to pull the data from each tab to compare the companies one for one, like we did in today's video. Also available in the Patreon are the models for Shift4 Payments and Rocket Lab. These models provide dozens of hours of research, all for the price of a cup of coffee. So whether it's for the valuation models or simply to support the channel, the Patreon is worth your consideration. But don't take my word for it, see for yourself. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Comment below on who you thought today's winner was, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have an awesome day. Peace.